Hello, I am Fritz Outman. This is October 22nd, 2020. And I welcome you to my rotational hitting correct execution instructional video tutorial. I had one from an earlier date. I left a thing or two out of that and I felt as though I would just do a little update today and uh, bring you up to speed with a point or two that will help you execute even better employing rotational hitting, of which I am the inventor back in 1990, 30 years ago, as a spin-off of my uh, vertical plane rotational pitching. It's uh, particularly apropos that I do an update on this with the rotational hitting because uh, almost a year ago now I was able finally to arrive at static stance starting positioning for my pitching delivery. Some of you might be familiar with that. But rotational hitting has always been static stance. No lifting a front foot, no taking a step. Uh, I'm presenting this free as I did in my previous one because of uh, an individual locally who has produced, I guess some time ago, a DVD, I believe it's entitled Rotational Hitting 101. Uh, this individual had visited my home back in, I think it was November of 2005, to discuss pitching mechanics, at which time he was introduced to both my sons, Josh and Zach, and I gave him a little demonstration of rotational hitting because it was a spin-off from my pitching methodology, and lo and behold, a number of things showed up on his site that uh, were original to me, uh, including <laughs> his uh, for sale DVD on rotational hitting. The 101, I, I imagine, is uh, uh, in reference to a college uh, 100 level, which is typically freshman level course. But what you're getting here, because I'm the originator of it, and uh, I have home video from 1994, my backyard, where my then 10-year-old son Josh and I were swinging bats on uh, uh, being videotaped. But I'm in shorts and flip-flops and no shirt, and I'm in, uh, not inclined to share that video. But I have that dating back that far as proof, and it goes back even further than that. But uh, this is not, uh, being from the originator uh, of it, I uh, actually know about it from the beginning, and I would say I put this at a 400 level course, a graduate course as opposed to 101. So if you want to learn how to hit, swing a bat rotationally and hit rota with rotational hitting, get it from me, get it for free. You don't need to pay somebody who, uh, who uh, absconded with the information and uh, is charging for inferior information, whatever that is. I don't have to, have to have seen it to know that. So uh, rotational hitting starts with no step, no picking up the front foot. It's a static stance, as, but wider than pitching, a rotational pitching on a vertical plane. Uh, typically, I like, if, imagine a plate here, the pitcher's there, catcher there. I'm right-hander, so naturally I'm going to be showing you right hand in this. Uh, let me take a moment to show you the grip. I'll walk up here to the camera. Your hand should be, a lot of people have the middle knuckles on one hand overlapping the, the uh, or the middle joint on one hand overlapping the knuckles on the other. You, sh you should have your middle joints lined up like this. That way when you rotate your bat, as you should when you're swinging, you keep the bat head level. If you let it drop, and typically if you have this alignment, you're not going to be able to do that. So. I say line up the middle joints uh, and then roll the bat head as you're swinging through and that keeps it level. If you let it under, you pop up, you get up too high, you drive it in the ground on a, on a pitch that you might otherwise handle. So there's your rotation of the bat. Okay, let's get back to the stance. Static stance, I get my feet wide. Not so wide you feel like you're doing the splits and you, don't, you can't rotate, but wider by far than a pitching uh, starting, static stance starting positioning. I like to have my feet, they're parallel. I have eh, maybe slightly closed to, to neutral uh, and a little bit of an angle, not, not perpendicular to the side of the plate, but a little bit of an angle. And then I'm usually kind of keeping my weight on my rear foot like I do with the pitching on the front pivot foot, a little bit of elevation of the rear heel and the weight on the ball, uh, of the, the ball of the rear foot and the bottom of the gray toe on the rear foot. So you have your, your, joint, your middle joints lined up. I keep my hands back and I keep my hands about belt high. 
you're going to have to bring them down here anyway to swing. And I'm not an uppercut guy. I'm a, a straight on guy. And if I get elevation the way I hit it, otherwise I drive the ball, line drive, ground ball. So I've got my stance I'm comfortable with. Can, I can sit like this, bounce my knees a little, or bounce my back end a little bit with my knees. And then I'm keeping my head up from this angle. I'm not putting my head down, I'm putting my head up. So when the pitcher's starting to deliver, I'm usually kind of doing this to keep my head up. And then I, as he's starting to is wind up or from set, I'm just rotating back a, a little bit, just to give me a little bit more distance, space through which to accelerate the bat. Now what, what is so great about rotational hitting? Well, there's a lot. For one thing, you're not taking a step. Well, what's, what's wrong with the step? A baseball is approaching, typically it's on a downward trajectory. So you're looking at it from the opposite end of the downward trajectory. Your brain has to calculate meeting that ball and putting the bat head where the ball is. When you are standing up at this height and you take a step, your head is descending. Not a lot, but enough. So now this angle that your brain is calculating is already looking down has, is changing. And the ball's approaching. And if you're someone that's facing people throwing 90 plus miles an hour, you've got less than four tenths of a second, four tenths of a second or less to be able to react. So that gives something more for your brain and more complicates everything. Rotational hitting is the simplest employee the human physiology for, for swinging a bat there is. And swinging a bat is easy. Compared to pitching, it's easy. I'm not saying that hitting a baseball thrown at toward you is easy. That takes eye-hand coordination, athletic ability, timing, so forth. But swinging a bat is easy. And the easiest, the simplest, most efficient, effective way is rotational hitting. So it keeps your head level. There's another thing. When you, when you walk, you don't notice this because your brain compensates. But if you, you can look at sometimes at a digital clock, LED or whatever, and you're walking, and, and you'll, your eyes are bouncing, those numbers will look like they're bouncing. They're not really bouncing, it's your eyes that are bouncing. So when you take a step, it doesn't matter how lightly you land, that shock is transmitted up through your legs, up to, ultimately to your eyes, and they bounce. So now you've got a ball moving in your direction, your head is going down a, a, a slope, and your eyes bounce, and you're supposed to hit that ball. Remove those, those, that extra difficulty by rotational hitting. No step, no step, no bounce, no head head change on a geometric plane, so to speaking. So your head is level, your eyes stay still, and you stay focused, and you have all kinds of leverage that you can apply from, rotation, from rotating the pelvis. So you got your hands positioned, and when you do swing, you're going to turn your wrists over just a little bit to keep that bad head level so it doesn't dip down or roll up. So how do you start this swing? Well, when you start it, has, you have to learn timing on your own, how near the ball should be to you when you initiate your swing. But how do you start, how do you execute a swing rotationally? Well, you do the same as, as with my methodology for pitching a baseball. My finalized out methodology, rotational pitching on the vertical plane. When you start your rotational acceleration pitching, you start with crossing your belt line. And that's exactly what you do with with rotational hitting. You start with your uh, front obliques, the ones closest to the pitcher, work your way across explosively across the front abs and then your bat side obliques. And to rotate, you're also going to use the inner thigh muscles of your rear leg and the outer muscles on the outside of calf to rotate your knee in and rotate your heel out. It's all part of your, the torque. You're going to keep your front knee in so you can squeeze like squeezing toothpaste out of a tube. The energy comes up. If you let your front knee uh, go out, you lose all the leverage that you, you've created. So you're starting, you're, you're muscularly, you're starting with crossing the belt line at the same time you're doing, pulling your front knee in, your right your back knee, in my case of right-hander, and your heel in and out to rotate. But how, what should, how should you get the bat to the, to the ball, the approaching ball? Well, a lot of people teach, you know, take your hands to the ball. 
Well, I teach with my pitching delivery something called removing slack, the relationship between constant consistency and the removal of slack in the pitching delivery. Well, all these things that I'm talking about, stance and the, the, how far you spread your legs and sitting, that's removing slack from your batting swing. And having your hands here instead of up here. This is slack where the ball has bat and your hands have to come down. That causes variability of result or inconsistency. So we have constants removing slack. So the hand positioning, starting with the rotation. But what are you intending to rotate by crossing your belt line front to back and explosively and all working all the muscles in your thigh, groin and the outside of the calf muscles on the back side and pulling your you're gonna turn your pelvis, but what you start with, what you put on the ball, figuratively speaking, is not your hands. It's your shoulder, your rear shoulder. And you start your rotation to put your shoulder and your, this is what you wanna put on the ball, but you're gonna simultaneously take your shoulder and the back side of your pelvis, and if you're right hand, your right side of your pelvis together rotationally. So that's going to be your swing. You start with the crossing the belt line it, well, and, and simultaneously with all the other muscles that I just described, but for the purpose of putting your trailing shoulder and your trailing pelvis together, you, you don't turn this and then this, or upper body and lower body. It's simultaneous. Shoulder, pelvis, shoulder, pelvis, the point here on your hip. And you do that with crossing the belt line, inner thigh, outer muscles of the outside of the calf, inner thigh pulling in. And as you're coming through, you're watching the ball. This keeps your hands close to your body, so they're not gonna fly out. They, almost, they can't because you're, you're starting with the shoulder. Now, why not the hands first? Because there's a lot of slack. The hands extend from the forearms, which extend from the upper arm, which are attached to the shoulder, which is in line with the pelvis. So from here to here, there's lots of slack, lots of play. But the, uh, the upper arm, the forearm, and the hands and the bat will go, will follow the shoulder and the pelvis. So you use this part of your body, and then this part of your body, arms out to the bat, will follow. And if you're, you're, uh, you're conscious of, uh, of rotating, getting a little rotating rotation up over the top with your pitching your, your, your top hand, rather, on the bat, you'll get lots of bat speed, very compact swing. You can lay, wait for the ball to get deeper in to you before you swing. That's rotational hitting. And what I left out in the past had to do with crossing the belt line and what you put on the ball, shoulder and pelvis simultaneously. You focus on the shoulder putting on the ball, but you bring the, your, your, if your right hand, your right side of your pelvis together with it. And your hands will then follow. You can't, when you're turning your shoulder, you're taking slack out of where your hands could go by themselves out here. And so even if you're going with an outside pitch, you put your shoulder and your pelvis on the ball. And you're still using, starting with the crossing the belt line. So you can look at that as many times as you want, or don't look at it again if you got this far. That is rotational hitting, 401 or better, graduate course in it, real quick, easy to swing a bat, and when you're doing it rotationally, you're taking out a lot of, you're taking out slack, you're creating constants, you're eliminating uh, elements of t normal uh, approach to swinging that causes your head to change planes geometrically speaking as you're stepping toward the ball and your eyes to bounce. Why do that? There's no reason. If it doesn't contribute, eliminate it. It's the same approach I've had with my uh, methodology for pitching over the, over, from the very beginning. Keep it simple, stupid. The uh, principle is simplicity. So there you have it. I'm Fritz Outman. Uh, I wish people the best in their baseball pitching related endeavors on my uh, correct execution instructional video for my pitching methodology and I'm wishing you similarly the best in all of your baseball and, and softball because this applies to softball as well hitting endeavors.